this is an example calculation for the energy input and output to a solar air heater. Uh, this is a 4x8 and this is with uh, five turns uh, or, or channels to speed up the airflow so that more heat is extracted off the off the black back of the surface. The front was covered with um, greenhouse plastic and, and the back was uh, an insulation board painted black with high temp uh, paint um, and, and, a, and, the, and the insulation factor on the board in the back was R4. The sides were four inches tall. Ambient air was 71 degrees Fahrenheit and that's the temperature that was coming in. Uh, the outlet temper, temperature was 125 F. Uh, these numbers are were measured with an infrared thermometer, uh, just for interest. Now, to do some of the calculations, I'll need an average temp for the box, which is approximately the out, output temperature plus the input temperature divided by two. This is halfway between those two numbers, so 98 would be the center. So a higher temp here would have more heat losses, and a lower temp here would have fewer fewer heat losses. Okay, so there's there's energy come from from the sun. Energy lost has heat through convection and conduction through the front and back surfaces, and, and a little bit from the sides. And then there's uh, black body radiation uh, uh, coming off. The the sun. Uh, when I when I did it at approximately it's at Atlanta latitude at on October 26th uh, noon the the watts per meter squared is about 900 um, and that and that's almost good for most of the winter as a max in the summer it's like a thousand um, the greenhouse plastic it doesn't it reflects about 13 percent of the incoming light glass reflects only eight percent the the black absorber I just guessed guessed that it was about 0.93 percent efficient that that the black backing is able to absorb and because of my design there were some areas about five percent that were not really collecting that in a four by eight uh, surface has 3.02 meters squared uh, or square meters so that times that is 290 total watts that are really available after these things are taken into account okay now the heat loss is uh, now this this comes from ba uh, a basic equation that uses the r factor these numbers over here are the r factors this is from the front surface the greenhouse plastic and and this is in the backing where the r equals four once you do the unit conversions for fahrenheit and feet squared the you can divide by 3.41 as the conversion factor okay so the average temp inside the box was 98 and the ambient temp was 71 so that's the the difference in in temperature between the ambient and the box on a cold day this number is going to come out a lot more if that's 30 degrees fahrenheit it's going to be a, a much worse situation um, the square foot area of 4 by 8 is is 32 so 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 you can see a, a the if you have twice the heat difference or twice the surface area then you then you're going to have twice the heat heat loss and likewise if you can improve these factors it's going to help a lot uh, this being less than one is because the airflow is directly against the greenhouse plastic normally it would be about r1 same as a window but but you lose a significant amount um, when there's uh, sustained or consistent airflow against uh, one side of either a glass or greenhouse plastic so that so you penalize there and i just assumed the, the backing was this although this may be um, this this may be too high since the backing itself is being heated uh, there, there may, there may be a problem here, because the backing is not actually at the box temperature, but it's at these higher temp. 
Okay, radiation loss. The uh, the black surface or most any normal surface has approximately 0.9% by 90% efficiency in radiating heat as a black body, and this this is a constant for kelvins in terms of kelvins, and this this 310 is is the 98 in terms of kelvins, um, and this is the 71 degrees Fahrenheit ambient in terms of kelvins. This difference makes a huge it, the difference between ambient and the inside of black box makes a very big difference because it's raised to the fourth power. In this case, at, with ambient fairly high, it, it wasn't too bad. So times the 3.02 uh, meters for the for the box. Take the sun inputs and subtract these two heat losses or uh, these two losses, and that should tell me how much came out of the box. And I don't need to do anything else, but a more what a more accurate way is to measure uh, measure it directly by the heat capacity of air. I, I measured I measured uh, this setup to have 66 cubic feet per per, me, per minute at at a standard conditions, and and this is a conversion factor for feet per minute and uh, temperature difference. This is the outlet temperature minus the inlet temperature, so that's how much the air was heated to, for heat capacity. And this is a conversion factor for uh, the heat capacity of air for cubic feet per minute and Fahrenheit. Okay, this comes out to be uh, 1,215 watts. Uh, now, now I can compare that to the theory up above, the, the 2090 coming from the sun minus the heat loss minus the radiation loss. The, the, the theory says I should have had this coming out. I'm not sure how to calculate this and there could be a lot of error if I choose the right, right wrong temperature. It's, there, it's complicated because this may be these temperatures if my infrared thermometer is correct. Um, the, the greenhouse plastic and glass will block some of that black body radiation, um, especially if the greenhouse plastic is thick, and, and it's supposed to, and they, they advertise that that's one of their benefits. Okay, so my, my measured should be the most accurate, and that measured divided by the avail available 900 watts per square meter come from sun times, this, times the surface area of, of the of the box gives me 45% uh, percent efficiency. To, to measure airflow, I, I taped together two uh, uh, nine 33-gallon uh, trash bags, which was gives me 39.7 cubic feet. And it took 36 seconds for the fan in this setup to fill it up when the temperature outside was uh, 71 Fahrenheit. It you can't it or there's problems if if you fill it up while it's at this temperature because that's the heat capacity of air is only at about 68 degrees Fahrenheit and there's some so there's 10 or 15 percent error when the or or when the temperature gets up this high the, this this conversion factor should be should be large this in the denominator. It should be larger, which would reduce. Uh, now I'm going to describe what I think will be the best possible design. At, I'm I'm going to use a four by eight and say the house temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit coming in and going out is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so which means this will have to be very high airflow. Uh, um, Okay, so I'm going to make the sides of the box six inches. It's, it's a little bit deep, with, um, and going to stretch a trash bag uh, in the channels so that there's actually two sets of duct works that that can stay separate if they wish with separate fans. Although there's no reason to keep them separate, they can be combined at at the entrance and the outlet. 
uh, so there's airflow going above the trash bag and behind it. And and uh, I'm going to say R8 for the backing and two glass panes in the front. So this will be for very northern northern latitudes. And the the example I'm going to give is going to be at 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so the sun input. Let's say it's a, a good good sun conditions. So this may not be in the middle of winter. This wouldn't be middle of winter for Canada. Even at noon, it may be as low as, as uh, 750. Okay, but e each glass pane is going to cost 8%, so there's there are those losses times the 900 watts per square meter. The absorber plastic, I believe the black plastic is, is very good, even even though it has some shine to it, I, I believe it's very good. And, and here's the square meters. Um, so this is the reduction in the sun input per square meter times the square meter. So I get 2140 watts uh, total for the 4 by 8. The, the heat loss, since I'm using my plastic design, I can keep, and since I'm keeping outlet temperature low with high flow rate, um, the average temperature inside a box is going to be 82.5 minus the external temperature. With uh, two panes of glass, I, I just added one to my 0.75, and and I and this this is a fairly accurate. Um, okay, and then R8 for the insulation, and then here's for the sides. That came up came out to 352 watts. The my estimate for the radiation losses are are going going to be the about about 83 degrees inside that's Kelvin 83 degrees Fahrenheit inside the box and and freezing uh, 0 degrees C 32 degrees Fahrenheit outside and this came out to 392 so so these are looking pretty good uh, I subtract them from the Sun input and I get 1396 as possible for this system which is a little bit more than what I know the air can carry uh, and the efficiency of, of this at, at using this number is going to be uh, 51 percent uh, so it's so it's a, a good box and it should work well um, I, I need to check that my duct design is is large enough for the airflow that's needed um, the the air heat capacity it if I if I assume I need 80 cubic feet per minute in each channel so times two and and this is going to be my temperature increase divided by the conversion factor I'm, I'm going to get out uh, 1360 one watts that that's what I can get out of it if if the other calculations come out okay so I want to check if I can get 80 cubic feet through a channel that's three inches tall and nine inches wide so so here's the the equation and this comes out to 5.5 this is a calculation I found somewhere that says what the equivalent duct diam diameter should be uh, because I, I know flow rates that are that are good for various duct diameters and 5.5 should be plenty for a bit or enough for 80 cubic feet per minute okay so that all check the design checks out as, as being as being valid 